Scientists in Japan had been digging through garbage bins and landfills near and far and have discovered a new strain of bacteria. It sounds gross, but this bacteria actually has a beautiful side. It might actually help solve a huge environmental problem. It's not news that the world is addicted to plastic. And although many US cities have recycling programs, still, much of it ends up here. And from the dumpster, it ends up in our landfills as a best-case scenario. But researchers at Kyoto University in Japan had just discovered a strain of bacteria that may change the face of our planet as we know it. Hi there, my name is Wai Leong and my name is Chi En. In this video, we are going to talk about a bacterium that degrades and assimilates polyethylene terephthalate, also known as PET. Before that, what is plastic? Plastic is a material consisting of any of a wide range of synthetic or semi-synthetic organic compounds that are malleable and so can be molded into solid objects. Most plastics contain organic polymers. The vast majority of these polymers are formed from chains of carbon atoms, pure or with the additions of oxygen, nitrogen or sulfur. The chains comprise many repeat units formed from monomers. Each polymer chain will have several thousand repeating units. The backbone is the part of the chain that is on the main path, linking together a large number of repeating units. Commodity plastics and engineering plastics are common types of plastics. These include polyamides or nylons, which are mainly used in making fibers, toothbrush bristles, tubing, fishing line, and low-strength machine parts such as engine parts or gun frames. Next, polycarbonate, mainly used in compact discs, eyeglasses, riot shields, security windows, traffic lights, and lenses. Besides, Polyesters, mainly used in fibers and textiles. Apart from that, polyethylene or PE. It has a wide range of inexpensive uses including supermarket bags and plastic bottles. There are three types of polyethylene, mainly high-density polyethylene, which are used widely in detergent bottles, milk jugs and molded plastic cases. Low-density polyethylene, which are used in outdoor furniture, siding, floor tiles, shower curtains, and clamshell packaging. Polyethylene terephthalate, PET, which are widely used in carbonated drink bottles, peanut butter jars, plastic film, and microwavable packaging. So what is PET? PET is the most common thermoplastic polymer resin of the polyester family. PET in its natural state is colorless, semi-crystalline resin. Based on how it is processed, PET can be semi-rigid to rigid, and it is very lightweight. Because of that, it is used in fibers for clothing, bottles, containers, thermoforming for manufacturing, and in combination with glass fiber for engineering resins. The diagram on the right shows a finished PET drink bottle compared to the preform from which it is made. PET consists of polymerized units of the monomers joined chemically by ester bond. About 56 million tons of PET was produced worldwide in 2013 alone, prompting further industrial production of its monomers, terephthalic acid or TPA and ethylene glycol or EG, as shown in the diagram, both of which are derived from raw petroleum. Properties such as durability, plasticity, and transparency in plastics have led to its large-scale production over the past century. It is widely incorporated into consumer products. These products are remarkably persistent in the environment because of the absence or low activity of catabolic enzymes that can break down their plastic constituents. In particular, Polyesters containing a high ratio of aromatic components, such as PET, are chemically inert, resulting in resistance to microbial degradation. The majority of the world's PET production is for synthetic fibers in excess of 60%, 
with bottle production accounting for about 30% of global demand. In 2016, it was estimated that 56 million tons of PET are produced each year. Worldwide, 480 billion plastic drinking bottles were made in 2016 alone, and less than half were recycled. Here are some issues that plastics have on the environment. Large quantities of PET have been introduced into the environment through its production and disposal, resulting in accumulation of PET in ecosystems across the globe. Many stray animals end up eating plastic bags and bottles due to improper disposal systems, and this can cause their death. Plastic pollution in marine water bodies leads to innumerable deaths of aquatic animals, and this also affects the aquatic plants to a considerable degree. Besides the environment, plastics also pose various problems on human health. PET is commonly used in commercially sold water bottles, soft drink bottles, sports drink bottles, and condiment bottles. With this in mind, plastics have the risk of leaching antimony, a toxic metalloid, into food and beverages. The chemicals in plastic may also cause vomiting, diarrhea, stomach ulcers, breathing difficulties such as asthma and other respiratory problems, liver dysfunction, and cancer. Due to the use of chemical additives during plastic production, plastics have potentially harmful effects that could prove to be carcinogenic or promote endocrine disruption. So how is the bacterium that degrades PET discovered? Let's take a look at their path to discovery. In 2016, researchers at Kyoto University in Japan discovered a strain of bacteria that may help to solve the plastic pollution issues. They call it Idonella sakaiensis. 250 PET debris contaminated environmental samples, including sediment, soil, wastewater, and activated sludge from a PET bottle recycling site were collected. Using these samples, microorganisms that could use PET foam as their major carbon source for growth were screened. One sediment sample contained a distinct microbial consortium that formed on the PET foam upon culturing and induced morphological change in the PET foam. This consortium degraded the PET foam surface. 75% of the degraded PET film carbon was catabolized into carbon dioxide at 28 degrees Celsius. Idonella sakaiensis was successfully isolated using limiting dilutions from the consortium that were cultured with PET film. The strain represents a novel species of the genus Idonella, for which the name Idonella sakaiensis 201-F6 was proposed. It was so named because it was first isolated from a PET bottle recycling site in Sakai City, Japan. The name was deposited in the National Center for Biotechnology Information Taxonomy Database under the identifier 1547922. The genus Idonella belongs to the family Komamonadacea of the class beta proteobacteria. It is gram stain negative aerobic and mesophilic. They appear as straight or slightly curved as porogenous rods. They are non-spore forming, motile with a polar flagellum. The colonies are circular, smooth and non-pigmented. They are positive for catalase and cytochrome oxidase. They are chemoorganotrophs, which means they utilize organic acids, amino acids and carbohydrates as their sole carbon sources. Their lipolytic and proteolytic activities are positive. It grows within the pH range of 5.5 to 9, optimally at pH 7 to 7.5. It grows at 15 to 42 degrees Celsius, optimally at 30 to 37 degrees Celsius. So, how does Adenella sarcansis degrade and assimilate PET? Let's take a look. First, Adenella sarcansis adheres to the PET material and secretes PETase, also known as ISPETase, which generates the intermediate mono 2 hydroxyl ethyl terephthalic acid, also known as MHET. 
Degradation of PET will be explained in the subsequent slides. Now, let's take a look at the structure of ISPETase. The left shows a space filling model of ISPETase. The bottom right shows a ribbon diagram of ISPETase. The three residues, serine 160, aspartate 206, histidine 237, shown as cyan color sticks, forms the catalytic triad. Now, if we zoom in closer at the active site, the simulated 2-HE MHAT4 molecule is shown as an orange colored stick. The PET degradation process can be divided into two steps, the NIC generation step and the terminal digestion step. In the NIC generation step, four MHAT moieties are bound to each subsite, one MHAT moiety to subsite 1, and three MHAT moieties to subsite 2. And the cis cell ester bond seems to be positioned between subsite 1 and 2 near the catalytic serine 160 residue. Then, the cleavage of one ester bond causes the formation of a nick in PET, resulting in generation of two PET. In the terminal digestion step, two PET chains having the HE and the TPA termini are digested into M hat monomers in somewhat different manners. For digestion of PET having the HE terminal, HEPET, the terminal M hat and the next three M hat moieties bind to subsite 1 and subsite 2 respectively, and breakage of the ester bond results in the production of one M hat monomer and HEPET N 1. Subsequent digestion of HEPET N 1 is expected to occur in a manner similar to that of the first cleavage process. Digestion of PET having the TPA terminal, TPA PET, is also expected to occur through positioning of the terminal TPA and the next three M hat moieties at subsite 1 and subsite 2, respectively. Cleavage of the ester bond seems to produce one TPA molecule and HEPET N 1. And this HEPET N 1 undergoes subsequent cleavage as observed in the HEPET degradation process. Alternatively, HEPET and TPAPET can also be digested through binding of PET polymer chains and the enzyme in the reverse direction, although this type of digestion might be less efficient than the above digestion. In this case, one or two M head moieties instead of three M head moieties can bind to subsite 2. These bindings can produce a variety of PET monomers and dimers such as 2 HEM head 2, M head 2, M head and B head, which can be finally digested to M head, TPA and EG. Continuous digestions of HEPET and TPAPET proceed in a combinatorial manner as described above, resulting in accumulation of four molecules including M head, B head, TPA, and EG. B head can be further degraded into M head and EG. Finally, three molecules of M head, TPA, and EG accumulate due to the PET degradation. In addition, it is worth to note that degradation of PET film by ISPETase accumulates significant amount of TPA. Although ISPETase cannot hydrolyze M head to TPA and EG. Based on the PET degradation process, due at all proposed, it can also be concluded that accumulation of TPA from PET film degradation is mainly derived from terminal digestion step of TPA PET. M head is taken up by isocyanases and then hydrolyzed by the second enzyme, the intracellular M head hydrolase or M headase, to furnish the two starting monomers, terephthalic acid TPA and ethylene glycol EG. Isocyanases produces these monomers from PET to facilitate its growth. Isocyanases completely degrades and assimilates PET as its sole carbon source. The degradation process is relatively slow. The complete degradation of a small PET foam took 6 weeks at 30 degrees Celsius. So that's all for the degradation and assimilation of PET by isocyanases. Now, let's take a look at the potential applications of this new breakthrough. 
The ability of Isakayensis to degrade PET could serve as an environmental remediation strategy as well as a degradation and or fermentation platform for biological recycling of PET waste products. The assimilation of PET by Isakayensis bacteria may be advantageous for removing this plastic material from the environment. If the terephthalic acid could be isolated and reused, this could provide huge savings in the production of new polymer without the need for petrol-based starting materials. To establish such a process, it may be possible to integrate the PETase or amhertase pair into common production strains via metabolic engineering or the use of enzyme cascade systems. Further research in this area will hopefully provide concepts and solutions for the degradation and recycling of other degradation-resistant plastic materials that are currently used and disposed. To sum things up, here is the pathway summary. Step 1. Isakayensis adheres on PET foam and secretes ISPTase. Step 2. The extracellular ISPTase hydrolyzes PET to produce MHAT and TPA. Step 3. MHAT is taken up by Isakayensis. Step 4. Intracellular MHATase hydrolyzes MHAT to TPA and EG. And finally, step 5. TPA and EG are assimilated for growth by Isakayensis as their sole carbon source. As a whole, the demand for plastic products is increasing exponentially from time to time. The use of plastics may possess risks and issues on the environment and health. The assimilation of PET by Isakayensis bacteria may be advantageous for removing this plastic material from the environment. If the terephthalic acid could be isolated and reused, this could provide huge savings in the production of new polymer without the need for petrol-based starting materials.